So having painted the front calipers a short while ago, I thought today we'd finally get round to painting the rear calipers. So let's get the car up in the air and the wheel off. So also, apologies for the wind today. It's a little bit windy, so hopefully it's not picking up on the mic too much. So obviously in order to paint these calipers, we're gonna to need to take them right off the car. So the first thing we're gonna do is just release the caliper kind of away from the bracket itself. There's two nuts here, one here and one here. You just need a 15 and a 14. 14 one goes on the back and the 15 goes on the inner then you can just kind of release them once they're out they're just small bolts like that just one at the top here and one at the bottom once you've got that done we should just be able to then kind of slide it off depending on how worn your discs are and how much of a recess there is in here okay brilliant so with the caliper now kind of off the disc what we need to do is just do these couple of last little bits so if you haven't seen it i'd recommend watching the how do i remove the brake caliper video Okay, so with the caliper removed, the next thing we need to do is obviously remove the caliper mounting bracket because we're gonna be spraying that as well. So the next thing that we can do with a fresh clean pair of gloves is just remove our pads. So they should just be able to slide out of there. Try not to touch the face too much, obviously. We can just remove them. It's a good time as well just to check there's plenty of meat on there, which there is. Just that one and then the one on the back side. And there we go. Again, we can see that's nice and healthy. Lots of meat on there. So these ones are gonna be going back on. And then to get the bracket itself off, just around the back here, you can just see where it fixes on. You've got two kind of fixings here. They are a number eight Allen bolt. So what we're gonna do is just basically get our Allen bolt in there, or Allen screw, Allen fixing, whatever you wanna call it, into here, just on a ratchet. I can't remember what the torque setting for these is. I think it's not too ridiculous, but hopefully we should just be able to loosen these off a little crack. There we go. If not, what we need to do is just get the uh, Break a bar on there, just to loosen these off. There we go, it's not too bad after all. So that's that one free. And what I'll do is just obviously get this one loose as well before we do the other one, so it's not flapping about too much. There we go, those fixings there. You can see straight away, we've just kind of got this double washer set up on there. So we just make sure that we keep them nice and safe, put them to the side, and we'll be reusing them when we put it back on. Okay, brilliant, so there we go. So now we can see we've got our caliper off, we've got our caliper bracket off, we've got our pads ready to go back on, and our fixings ready as well. The other two caliper fixings just there, and obviously our little bleed nipple cover there as well. So what we can do now is just get tidied up outside here, get all the tools back indoors, We'll get these back in the garden or out in the garden so that we can give them a good clean up ready for painting okay so now we're in the garden we can see exactly what we've got we've got the bracket itself and then the actual caliper we can see that there's a whole host of bits that we might want to strip off on the bracket obviously we've got the sliders kind of top and bottom so we'll be able to remove them take them all the way out just unclick them there we go and they can come out we'll make sure we give them a good clean up make sure they go back in with some fresh grease on there and obviously we've also got the pad slider kind of little brackets as well, little inserts. So we can just make sure that we take these off nice and carefully without bending them, because we're gonna to wanna to reuse these. So I'll get those off in a second. With the caliper itself, obviously we've got the pad wear indicator bracket. So we'll take that off. It looks like a torque screw or something in there that we'll be able to use. The bleed nipple, we'll be able to take that off. And just as we did when we did the front, we'll put another fix in there to stop any dirt, grease or grime going back in the hole. And then at the back, obviously where the handbrake cable comes onto it, that's where the handbrake cable comes in there. That's the bit we kind of had to get over. We've got a couple of fixings here. We've got that one there and this Torx one here. So I may remove them just to get a bit more access for cleaning it. But like I said, when we did the front, the only bits you're realistically gonna see is actually this face here. So how much I'm gonna clean up, I'm not sure. I might only go down to here somewhere, something like that, because the rest of it's gonna be around the back. But we'll have a look, see how it goes. I don't wanna compromise anything. I wanna get it as best as possible and take the opportunity to just basically clean it up. But for now, what I'm gonna do is just remove those two bits, that one there and that one there. And then we'll start getting them on the wheel. We've got the wheel out ready over there. That's what we're gonna go straight onto and we can get these nice and clean, ready for painting. Okay, brilliant. So now that these parts stripped down, what we're gonna do is put it straight in the grinder wheel today. Rather than mess about trying to kind of use the wire wall brush on it and stuff like that, we're gonna put it straight in here because this had the best results last time. So like I said before as well, this bit kind of goes to the back and this is the bit that is exposed to the front. So I'm gonna focus more on this area, probably across the front here as well, because we're gonna be able to see these bits. But the bits around the back, I'm not gonna focus on too much, but we'll see how we get on. If it goes really well, then maybe I will. 
And obviously, whenever you're working on this type of thing, always make sure that you get your safety glasses on too. So straight away, we can see a good improvement there. So I'll crack on and get this whole thing done. Okay, so after quite a while of cleaning, I've managed to get these to come up really quite well again, to be fair. I've not done, like I say, the back and then bits around there, particularly where the slider's going, because I didn't want to compromise that. But I'm really happy with the points that are going to be on show. The caliper itself, obviously, you can see that looking a whole lot shinier now, a whole lot cleaner. So in particular, kind of all these bits at the front that are going to be on show. I've managed to do quite a lot around the back of it as well, but I'm going to start masking it up now so that we can obviously not compromise any of the bits around the back that we don't need to around the back of this bit here as well if you remember when we did the front by masking that off it kind of allowed us to pick it up and carry it and move it none of that's going to be on display it's literally just going to be the stuff at the front so i'm going to start masking it up now i'm going to use just as we did previously a bit of masking tape that's all i've got to hand today so i'm going to get these masked up and then obviously we can get a little spray booth set up exactly as we did before Okay, so fast forward a good hour, hour and a half. We've got our brackets all sorted. We managed to mask them up, like I say, the bits that are gonna be exposed, just exactly as we did before. So we're not compromising any of the fixings or the slider points either. And then on the caliper itself, done exactly the same. So the handbrake spring area, all of that. The bits where the actual piston is and the bits where the pads are gonna go as well. Just masked all around, all of that. We've got a little temporary pop-up spray booth exactly as we did before so in our own frame ladder just over with the dust sheets and as we've learned several times <laughs> putting a good base down to make sure that when the spray falls down to the floor it's not going to cover everything i'm sure as we look at my shoes we can see they're covered in red steel from last time they're going to end up red as well on my my legs maybe but maybe i'll see if i can learn my own lesson from it exactly as i did before like i said i put them fixings in there for the brake hose and the brake bleed nipples so now we are all dry we're all clean and we're all good to go I'm pretty happy with it, as good as it is, it's gonna be about as good as it's gonna get realistically for today. So let's get the spray can out and start painting. Okay, so just to recap on this spray as well, we're using this K2 brake caliper paint, which as it says down the bottom, I think it goes up to 260 degrees C. So like I said before, all the research I did, a lot of them just turned out that they claim to be brake caliper paint, but they only actually went up to normal spray paint temperatures, so not good enough. This one, from what we've seen from the front, has done a very good job so far it's not peeling or flaking and i think it says in the instructions here clean them all up sand them down with sandpaper which obviously we've done a much better than that two to three coats is required shake the can for two minutes before use which i've just done hold it at about 20 to 30 centimeters 10 minute intervals it's a great day today it's really nice and warm so hopefully we should be drying off pretty quickly so let's get the first coat on Okay, so having just put that first bit on, I've learned my lesson from last time. I'm actually gonna put blue gloves on. If you remember, I ended up spraying all my nails, which wasn't particularly useful. And I've also, just down the bottom here, we're in it at getting peak legs. What I've done is obviously just got my legs folded and just put them under here. So as the paint's falling down, it's hopefully not gonna come onto my legs and it will stay inside our little spray booth. Okay, brilliant. So with that first coat on, I'm just gonna leave them now for 10 minutes for that to dry a little bit. But what we're gonna do, just make the best use of our time while we can. Cleaning up things like the pad wear indicator bracket. If you remember before, kind of where it's all nice and silver and shiny here, we can get the entire bracket back to that. So we'll do that, get that nice and clean. And then obviously our pad slider kind of elements as well. Again, we can clean these up, getting them back to nice and shiny. So we've got them there and probably also our slider pins as well. So we can just get all these things cleaned up in a 10 minutes while we're waiting for that first coat of paint to dry. And then obviously, if it takes more than 10 minutes, we'll come back, we'll get another coat on, and then we can keep doing this. Okay, so I think we've made a good use of that last 10 minutes or so. I'm really pleased with the way that they've come up. Obviously, there's a lot of brake dust and dirt that's come off of them. We've got now the opportunity, obviously, to get some nice fresh red rubber grease back on these slider pins when we put them back on. What I might do in the next 10 minutes is just see if I can clean the heads of these uh, fixings up as well. But for now, 10 minutes has gone by, so let's get the next coat of paint on. 
Okay, so another 10 minutes has passed and they're starting to look really good. You know, you can really see the finish going on there. It's starting to look a bit shiny and everything now as well. So what I'm gonna do is just get the third coat on there, see how they go, see if it maybe needs a fourth coat. I think when we did the, the front one before, it needed a fourth coat or maybe just a little touch up in a few areas. So I'm gonna get this third coat on and then we'll see how we go. I'll leave it for a little while and then we can start looking at getting it down and getting it all back together. Okay, so we put that third coat on and to be fair, I've gone over with kind of a slight fourth coat as well. As it is such a nice day as well today, what I've done is just taken them out from underneath the covers and brought them out into the light, so hopefully in the heat as well. So hopefully they're going to dry off a whole lot better and a whole lot quicker. You can see the shine on them and they're really looking really good. I'm really impressed again, once again, with how well that single kind of paint has just come out. That there, the bracket up here, when we look at that, exactly the same again, you know, it's a real high gloss finish to it. So I'm really impressed with that paint. So for now, what I'm gonna do is just let them dry off for a good while, as long as possible. Remember last time when we put them back on, they were still a bit tacky. So I'm gonna try and let them dry as long as possible. All the other bits and pieces that we've got, the little brackets and stuff, obviously we can start getting them back onto them as well when it comes to it. But for now, I'm gonna give it a little while and uh, yeah, then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so it's been a bit longer now and they're still drying. They're still a bit tacky to be fair, and it's only been, I don't know, maybe half an hour or so, something like that. But it's getting to that dodgy stage again now, where what I really want to do is actually get in there and get them put back together. But I know that if I do that now, I'm going to compromise the paint. So what I might do is actually just leave them hanging, maybe get the sliders back in or something like that. Ideally what I want to do is get the spring back on as well, but I don't want to compromise the paint. So maybe I might do it, I'm not sure. Okay, so it's got to that point where I can't wait any longer. I've got too impatient and I wanted to start putting stuff back together. But I think you'll agree, they look absolutely incredible. We've got kind of some of the brake pad sliders on in there, kind of the actual rubber sliders as well, kind of the slider pins. This is all back together. The springs on, back around the back, the bleed nibble back on. The pad wear indicator, sensor kappa, uh, bracket, whatever you want to call it, is back on as well. And just together, it just looks really, really good. So it's still ever slightly tacky to the touch. In actual fact, it's been a lot better now to be fair. So what I think we'll do is get stuff back out the front and we'll try and get it back in the car. Okay, so we're back out the front, everything's ready to go, but the wind has really got up massively. So hopefully you can hear me over the wind because it's just so incredibly annoying today. We've got everything ready to go, all the tools laid out, the extra brake fluid and everything like that. So now we can really get these back on the car. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is get a bracket back on, obviously just back on here. So this was with the eight mil Allen bit as well. So we've got the bolts ready for that so what i'm going to do is just put a bit of thread locker on here as well just so we can get them in and then these torque up to just check my torque settings the bracket 54 to 60 newton meters on these so i'm just going to get these on now and then that'll be the bracket on i should also say i've got a new pair of gloves on for this as well now i'm handling the fresh paint so i want to make sure that we don't get any dirt or anything like that on there so new pair of gloves for this stage Okay, so back around this side now, we can see it's really starting to take shape. Just have a quick check, obviously the handbrake's not on. There's no rubbing or anything like that. The little stainless steel clips that we've got in there are nicely aligned as well. No issues with them, no rubbing, top or bottom. So we're all good. So next up, realistically, what we're gonna do now is get the caliper back on. First thing we're gonna do, just in reverse order is the way we took it off, is get the hose reconnected. Okay, so now we've got the hose back in there. All we need to do now is basically tighten that back up. So if you remember what I said before, there was a gap there. The torque setting of this is only 14 to 18 Newton meters. So all I'm gonna do is just basically get a spanner on there and make sure that it's really nice and tight by hand. Okay, great. So with that now on there tightened up, what I've done is just hung that, just stuck up. I don't know if you can see that, just stuck out the screwdriver through that bit, if you can hear me over the wind, which is exceptionally annoying today. It really winds me up. But just like that in there so we can hang the caliper on there. What we're going to do now is just get a bit of copper grease just in the sliders here, just ready for the uh, pads to go in.
Okay, so next up, I'm just gonna get the pads in. Just gonna go with the back one first, which is the one with the pad rotator. Just put that in. And then the other one as well, straight back in. Sometimes it's easy to go in at a little bit of an angle first and then just twist it back in. There we go. So now next up realistically is to get the caliper back in. So we have to make sure that we get our padware sensor cable, run it through the opening. So I'm just gonna lift it up, remove the driver that I put there just to hang it. Get that cable, run it through that hole. There we go. Bring it back into position. Just check, make sure that the piston hasn't expanded, which it may well have done. If it has, what I'll do, I'll just run that back quickly. Okay, so we just had a bit of a monumental fight to get the caliper back on there, basically. The piston had expanded and I had to push it back, I had to roll it back, but uh, I was using the rollback kit here, but I had the actual, the wrong end on it. I was using, I think it was whichever one it is, one of these ones, but it was the one that didn't twist the cylinder back. So by the time I realized that after having a fight with it, scuffing the paint up a little bit, which is unfortunate, but I think it might just be a bit of dust. We'll see if we can get it off. We've now got it back on. So we've got our little bolts back in just top and bottom here. So what we're gonna do now is just get them torqued up. They're only very low, these ones are, what are they, 20 to 30 Newton meters. So we'll need to put our spanner back on here. I can't remember what size it was. I think it was a, a 15 or something like that that went on the front there. And then the one on the back, which again was uh, whatever size it was, I think I said at the start of the video. So we'll just get them back on now. And then obviously we can get the uh, padware indicator hose connected back on. And then we can look to, to get up there, the handbrake cable connected back. Okay, great. So with these fixings back on now, the pad were indicated back in and all clicks on and all back in its bracket. What we need to do now is just get the handbrake cable back in. So if you remember before, we had this little clip. We're just going to pop that back off, feed it through the hole so everything runs through nicely. We'll just hold on to this little clip for the time being. And then what we need to do, obviously, is just try and run underneath and bring it back up so it sits in here. So at the minute, I'm just going to use the pliers See whether or not I can just pull it through, feed it behind it. There we go, just about. <laughs> there we go, straight back in. And we can get that little retaining clip. Just pop that back on the top down. It's a shame that that rubber's perished because otherwise that would be a perfect job now and we'd be able to have that nice and clean also. But that's the handbrake reconnected. So next up, realistically, is just to get the brakes bent. I think it's safe to say that it's looking really cool at the minute. But before I breathe the brakes, what I'm gonna do is just check the fluid in the reservoir and top that up a little bit. Okay, great. So that's all bled. It's all done now. It's all as firm as it needs to be. Pedal feels really good as well. So what I'm gonna do now is get the wheel back on and get the car back down. Okay, there we go. So there's the finished product. At the end of the day, what actually turned out to be a bit longer of a day than I thought it was gonna be. Primarily because of waiting for the wind to stop blowing so you could hear me. But then also just waiting for the paint to dry. But what I did get the chance to do while I was waiting for the paint to dry was just go over the white walling again, which again, I think looks really good. Now with the red caliper on there, the clean wheel and the white walling, I'm really pleased with that look. All I need to do now is just get that dropped about 50 mil or so and it'll look a whole lot better. So for me, I'm really pleased with that. So there we go. Hopefully that's been useful and you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, remember to give us a like down below. If you haven't done so already, remember to hit subscribe coming up here now. There's loads more videos on the channel and it'll make it so much easier to come back and find the others. But for now, like I say, hopefully it's been useful. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch it. Next week, who knows what's going to be next week. But uh, yeah, for now, thanks very much and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.